Uh, good work today. They, they really came out and uh, were focused and worked hard, and it was physical, and it was uh, everything that we wanted on a, on a Wednesday practice. So, what the heck are you I doing know. here, man? Good to see you. I drop right? in every now and again. Yeah, okay. So it was good. How's uh, Nate looking? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Nate, okay, I'm, I don't want to be flippant, so I'm going to ask Nate Yesse. Yeah. Nate yeah. <laughs> being flippant <laughs> when I said that. <laughs> Nate Yesse, uh, I think he's doing well. He was on the on the side today on the bike, and it looked like his flexion was good, and he's he's practically living in the training room, okay. trying to get himself ready. And, uh, you know, I think he'll probably be a uh, game time decision. And I know he's just doing everything he can to get out here, everything he can, and uh, we appreciate that. So hopefully he's ready to go. We'd love to have him. USC's run game is really kind of ramped up. Um, how, how big is that of a concern? Well, I mean, it's it's a it's a concern because you're right. It's they're really good running the football. Um, you know, they've got an, an offensive line that can move people out. They've got uh, runners that can get downhill and make you miss, and and they've got a, a nice pass game. So, you know, you can't commit everything to the run. And when you commit to the pass and, and they run it, you know, they're effective. So we have a lot of respect for it. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to do an excellent job of, of playing with leverage and, and proper play entry and, and, and pad level. And, and most, most importantly, we're going to have to tackle well. The defense has been pretty, probably the most consistent part of your team of the three uh, main facets, though. Does that, does that give you confidence going into this that that, that can – turn the game in your favor? Well, I, I think we, we've played good defense. You know, we've had uh, a couple of, uh, uh, you know, the, the game I go back to that, that bothers me the most, I think, is the, is the Utah game uh, and then the last drive against Stanford. You know, those are those are a couple things that, that bother me. A, a few plays versus Utah. Not, not the game in its entirety, but a few plays against Utah. But in general, uh, we're playing with a lot of confidence on defense, and we're playing with confidence because our guys are working hard. They understand the scheme. Uh, they know what to do. They trust each other, and that's always a sign of, and they can run. And that's those are the signs of a good defense. So, you know, I'm confident that we'll go out, we'll, we'll play well. But, you know, once again, you know, we're playing a very, very explosive and 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 uh, um, I'd say balanced offense. So it's going to take our best effort. The flip side is that their their run defense is pretty darn good as well. And obviously, you guys had struggles in that. I mean, obviously, you don't want to talk about the game plan, but do you, do you try to go away from a team's strength and emphasize something else, or do you? how do you kind of match up as far as looking at what they do well and what you don't do well and, and kind of reacting to that? You go with a plan, and, and you know, you, you, you plan based upon what you see them doing, based upon what you do well. Or maybe what they have struggles with, and, and and you do well, or you know you struggle with, and it's their strength. And and then as the game unfolds, it always seems to adjust a little bit, you know. So I'll just tell you this: whatever it takes for us to get ourselves in a position to win the game, that's what we're going to try to do. If that means we have to drop back and throw it a hundred times, then that's what we'll do. If it means that we have to run it a hundred times, that's what we do. If it's 50-50, that's what we'll do. It's just. You know, you, you have a plan and you go in and you make adjustments through the game based upon what's happening. You've been in this rivalry now for a few years. What type of recruiting implications can a game like this one have? I don't think they're as, as significant as, as most people believe. Um, you know, you're dealing with a monster over there, quite frankly. You know, you're dealing with an amazing tradition. You walk in there and you see national championships and Heismans and retired jerseys and you know you see some of the greatest players to ever play the game um, and uh, uh, you know we're fighting that all the time we're fighting it hard and, and uh, you know we're, we're, we're winning our share and they're winning their share I don't know how much how much the game really matters it's interesting you know I, I won't mention the name because I'm not allowed to uh, talking to a, a, a recruit last night um, his parents they grew up USC fans you know, they're Trojans, and they're not going to let him go somewhere else, whether he wants to or not. I'm not saying he doesn't want to, but it's, you know, there's some kids you just can't pull away. And then there's some kids that, that grew up and they love UCLA, you know, and they're going to come here. So I don't think that the game matters as much, the, the score of the game matters as much as just maybe their, you know, the colors that they flew at their house when they were young, whether they were the 
you know, the, the USC colors or the, or the UCLA Bruin colors. I know you've been pretty selective about game balls that you've given out over the years. I know you gave Mike one this past week. When you look at what he's done for this team this year, what what was the calculus for you that you thought, you know, he deserves this or in terms of what he's meant for you and the, and the team? Just five years of a great attitude. Um, five years of, of sucking it up. Uh, you know, five years of kind of living in the shadows, but never uh, getting down or letting it affect him or those around him. Uh, you know, four games where, you know, he had to go in there as the backup and we couldn't quite get it done. And it just seemed like the right thing to do to, to reward him. There's a lot of guys on this team that deserve a reward, but it just seemed like the right thing to do, you know, to, to say, hey, look, Mike, we, we just really appreciate who you are and what you've meant to this program. And it's reflected in the fact that we got a win tonight and you get the game ball. Because you know, I'm not saying his performance was the greatest of all time. It was just, it was accumulation of, or a culmination, I should say, of, of everything he's meant for the last five years to this program. When he had the option to leave this for his grad, grad year, did you say anything to him about, you know, the opportunity or, or have a conversation? Never had him? a single conversation with him. Uh, not, not even, not even a whisper, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, I don't know if he considered it or how strongly he considered it. Uh, it was just something that, that Mike and I never talked about. Mm -hmm. So he maybe talked to someone else about it, but I don't even know that, mm -hmm. you know? I'm just glad that he's with us. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm happy he's with us. There, there, there's been some, historically, some step up performances in the rivalry game from quarterbacks, Patrick Cowan, John Barnes. Do you ever reference those or go back and look at history? And, and, and is that, do you ever use history when you talk to this team about things like that and, and how, obviously it's not going to impact the game, but maybe it's like a, a point of inspiration or something like that. You know what, as a coach, you're always looking for a way to inspire and motivate and focus your team. And that, that's what you do, you know, and, and it's really kind of all three, keep them focused and on point with the right mindset, but, you know, maybe inspire just a little bit extra. Uh, doesn't doesn't take a lot in this game, or motivate him just a little bit extra. It doesn't take a lot in this game, just because of the implications of the game. Uh, but if you can find something anywhere, anything that that you can use to, to like I said, focus, motivate, and inspire your team, you use it. And if that means going back into the archives and finding a particular play or a particular player uh, at any point in time, then we we absolutely do that. Not just for this game, but really for any game. Being a former walk-on to your, yourself, do you feel like you have a soft spot for like stories or guys like that that stuck around and they just worked their way to the top, like in that way? Yeah, I do. I mean, I respect I respect all these young men that come out here and you know that that are paying their way. Um, it's not cheap to go to school here. It's challenging academically. Um, yeah, I respect the heck out of those guys. And then, you know, to see some of the stories, and that's why I love to save a couple scholarships for walk-ons. You know, we've had success, you know. You you, you get some young men that, that uh, you know, we were talking about, about Mike Faithful, but, you know, you look at Charles Dawson, you know, the club. I mean, he's earned a scholarship. You go back and you look at, uh, at uh, LB or Rosie, you know, those guys that made plays for you that were initially walk-ons, but they just, their heart, I think it inspires a lot of guys. I think Mike inspires his players. I think they respect the hell out of him. Yeah, I, I, I do have a spot, soft spot for those guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two more games with the senior class, but this is their last time coming out of the Rose Bowl. So, what does this kind of senior class mean to you? Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I love them. You know, I mean, they're my guys, uh, and I don't, I don't mean like they're my guys. I mean, they're, they're the guys that you know I recruited. And I've, I've been with for. Now I'm watching Randall and Fabian walk off the field right there. I've been with those guys for five years. Met them six years ago. You know, been watching, watching them develop on the field and off the field. And I'll miss them dearly, you know. And I just want the best for them. And it's, you know, you get really, really close to these guys. I mean, you get incredibly close to them. You know, you become like they're 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 your kids. They're your family. So it gets emotional. You know, senior day uh, every year for me has gotten more emotional. You know, more in depth uh, as I've gotten to know these guys more. And this will be the toughest one yet. You know, I don't even like talking about it right now. You know, I, I don't like it. You know, in in. Yesterday, Jordan Zumwalt came walking to my office, and you know, it's like the greatest feeling in the world. And the day before, Simon Goins came walking in my office, and he's, you know, he's back in LA, and he has 18 job offers, and he's about to launch a, launch an app with 
with Brandon Willis, who came in the it's just, you know, those are the great things about college football, is seeing them leave, become successful, and come back. It's awesome. Any special birthday plans heading into the game? We, we need to stop talking about that. I don't want to have a birthday. <laughs> I'm like everybody else my age. I want to quit thinking about it. So, no, no, I, I would just, you know, love to have a, a, a great night. That's all.